this wonderful week we've had. Uh, Lord bless us with a lot of rain, and so uh, I hope you're uh, hope you're all doing well. The Lord bless you and touch you and minister in your homes and your hearts. It's so good to uh, be able to get back with the word of the Lord tonight and just uh, minister uh, to uh, to each and every one. Just a few uh, quick announcements. Don't forget uh, one most important announcement. Jesus is coming soon. Ready or not, he's coming for a church, coming for people. Those that are looking for him, those that are ready, those that are uh, excited about his coming. He's coming back, and it could be any day now. So let's just keep looking up for the Lord to return. Also, don't forget, Sunday morning we'll have worship in the church. This Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, no Sunday school, but 11 o'clock we'll have worship in the church. Uh, building, uh, Sunday night at 6.15 will be a conference call. And Wednesday night will be uh, uh, live stream again next week. Uh, I'll let you know Sunday uh, what we'll be doing about the next Sunday. So uh, just uh, be attentive, be listening, and I'll let you know about that. So just be much in prayer, Lord, to touch and bless and help us to get back into the building soon, but cautiously. We'll go to the Lord in prayer at this time. We're going to welcome his presence. Also, just ask God to move and minister and touch every life, every heart. I know each and every one is listening and watching and viewing. You have a need, a special request that the Lord knows all about. We're going to lift them up. We're going to pray for them. Also, let's keep our lost loved ones in prayer. We're going to touch and bless them, minister their needs and their situations. Also, let's remember our children. God will bless them. Touch our children, their homes, and, uh, and their hearts, and just do a mighty work in their lives. Help them to continue to be excited about serving the Lord. Also, let's keep our teachers and faculty and all our frontline workers in prayer. God will touch them and minister their needs. Let's keep Tegan's dad, Troy, in prayer. Lord, keep blessing him and touch him speedy recovery. Also, I talked to Sister Brenda this morning. Let's keep Sister Brenda in prayer. Lord, touch her uh, in a mighty way. Also, uh, uh, just lift her up and ask the Lord to touch her. Also, let's continue to keep Sister Mary in prayer. Lord, bless her and minister to her needs. Let's also keep... Uh, uh, Tony Gregory in prayer, Lord, touch him and encourage him and bless him uh, as he uh, has a speedy recovery, Lord, touch him. Let's also keep Candace's friend, Troy Ann Henson, in prayer, Lord, touch her and take away that cancer and move in a mighty way. That need also, uh, Candace sent me a text, uh, uh, someone at the facility she used to work at uh, passed away. Let's keep that family in prayer, Lord, will touch that family, minister that need. Also, let's keep uh, Brother Tim and Sister Angel in prayer, Lord, touch them, minister their need. They have a special prayer request, Lord, knows all about. Ask the Lord to touch, minister their need in a mighty way. Praise the Lord. I'm sure we all got needs, situations, circumstances we need to lift up. Let's lift up our country, our government, our, our political figures, our military. God will touch them and minister their needs and touch them as we uh, as we continue to uh, travel through this uh uh, unprecedented time, this time of uh, uncertainty and unknowing, but we just keep moving on, keep up one step, one foot in front of the other, that we'll continue to be what God would have us to be. And God will shape each and every one and stir each and every one that will continue to be what He would have us to be. Help me pray tonight. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, Lord, loving you and praising you. Thank you for this beautiful week you've given us, Lord. Thank you for the rain, Lord. Lord, it may seem like it's uh, too much. It may seem like it's uh, a lot. But, Lord, you know what to send us when you send it, God. We just thank you for the rain. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for the help you've given us, Lord, the opportunity to be in your house to bring this message tonight. Thank you for allowing us to be able to be live on Facebook, Lord. We just thank you for all that you've done. You've reached out and you've ministered our lives and time and touched time and time again. And we thank you for that. Lord, we just ask you to come down in a mighty way. Minister, move in the service tonight. Minister, move in the message. Lord, reach down and touch and bless every life, every heart that, that is listening, that hears this. Lord, or sees this. Lord, help them touch their heart and prove their heart. Lord, we come to you tonight burdened out. Everyone's got a need, a special request. Lord, you see all the ones at home watching and viewing. Lord, everyone's got a special request for an urgent need that's just as important as outspoken request. God, you see the need, the circumstance, the mountain, and the valley. God, we ask you to move and minister that need, that situation, that circumstance. Let your work be done. Let your light shine forth. Let your power prevail in that need. Lord, touch our lost loved ones that we saved before. It's everlasting too late, Lord. Reach down and touch them. And by the way, touch our children, our young people. Be with them and lead them and guide them. Help them continue to put a fire in them. Lord, help them continue to be excited about serving them. Lord, I ask you to touch Miss Brenda tonight. Reach down and touch her right where she's at. Everything to go well. Everything to go the way she needs it to, Lord. And the way you want it to, God. We just ask you to move in a mighty way. Touch Miss Mary tonight. Reach down and touch her, Lord. Touch Tim and Angel. Reach down 
touch that their special request. Reach down and bless them in a mighty way. Reach down and minister to their need. Lord, I ask you to move on that scene. Move on that need. Lord, I ask you to touch a cancer friend, Troy and Henson. Lord, reach down and touch that need. Take away that cancer. Move in a mighty way. Lord, touch that family of the one of the facility that Candace used to work at. Lord, that passed away. Lord, I ask you to touch in that need, that situation. Lord, reach down and bless in a mighty way. Touch every need, every home, every heart. Lord, reach down and bless. Lord, touch our country. Our political figures, those in high places, Lord, I ask you to touch them and minister to their needs. Lord, reach down and touch our government, Lord, reach down and touch all those frontline workers, Lord, reach down and move and minister and touch in a mighty way. Let your power prevail, Lord, help us to be stirred up, shaken up, Lord, and fill forth and do your will. Lord, we just ask you to come down in a mighty way and not have your power, your, your Shekinah glory, and shine forth and minister in the hearts and in the lives of everyone, Lord, reach down and touch all those that are associated with our church, all those ones listening, Lord, viewing. Lord, I ask you to touch them in a miraculous way, a mighty way, Lord, tonight, move the minister in their homes and in their hearts. Lord, and touch all our local pastors and our local churches. Lord, reach down and bless them and touch them. And Lord, help this pandemic to go away. Help this virus to go away. And Lord, help us to be able to get back into the building, Lord, slowly, but cautiously. But God, get back with the fire and the anointing shining forth in our homes and in our hearts and our lives. Lord, that we go forth and do your will. Be that light and that witness. We thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for moving in the mighty way. In Jesus' holy, wonderful name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Tonight I have an encouraging message for you tonight. If you have your Bible, 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3. We'll be reading verses 15 through 18. 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning verse 15. Let me say I thank you for watching and viewing I know it takes time out of your schedule, time out of your uh, evening or morning or day, whenever you view uh, to watch. But I do appreciate you, and I do thank you uh, for viewing and for listening and just letting God have his way in your life. It's not about me. It's not about anything I can do. It's not about anything this building can do, but it's about God. The God that's over this building, the God that's over my life and over your life. And I want to thank you for, for each and every one that views and watches these sermons. Praise the Lord. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, see, ye know these things before. Beware, lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this message. Lord, we ask you to reach down and stir up the message. Lord, stir in our hearts. Lord, our ears hear, Lord, our hearts receive, and Lord, this message, the message one more time, God, pour into every life. We love you tonight, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Talk to you for just a little while, a few moments on. We need to grow. We need to grow. That last verse, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. You see, as we talk about growth. We talk about growing. You know, many times we uh, across this world, we look at growth in numbers. We look at it in, in, in numbers as far as weight and height and uh, bank accounts and uh, congregations in the church world and on the job. We look at numbers in how many staff we have, how many people we have. We look at numbers, you know, we look at we look at growth in different ways, you know, and as we, as moms out there, they have babies, they have uh, they have children, and, and, and as they continue to grow, there's different weights and numbers for their age that they try to reach. They take to the doctor if the if the child's not weighing enough, or the not not growing enough, not eating enough, and and not getting the growth pattern right. Many times, moms or dads will take that child to the doctor to see what's wrong, what's going on, because growth hasn't happened like it needs to, and so. Uh, we understand that, and just as uh, just as much as uh, uh, as that mom or that dad sees the problem with the growth, and they go to the doctor to try to find a fix or a cure or a 
a, a reason as to why there's not growth. You know, it's us in the church world, we need to examine ourselves and, and look and see why we are not growing within our own being. You see, God looks at it in a spiritual fashion, a spiritual matter. You see, the Word of God tells us where two or three are gathered together in His name. He is there in the midst of them. And so we understand that even with numbers, God still looks at numbers too, but he, He's not so concerned about uh, our facility having 500 people in it. What He's concerned about is how many people are we reaching? How many people are we sharing the gospel to? How many people are we reaching out uh, in the highways and the hedges? How many people are coming to know Jesus as Lord and Savior? It's not about how much uh, uh, money is in the bank account, but it's how God provides everything that we need, everything from the clothes on our back to the food on our table to the shoes on our feet and the roof over our head. Hallelujah. God provides all the way. And so he doesn't look at how much money we can make, how much money we can earn, but what he looks at is, is how big spiritually we can be. You see, he looks at, uh, he doesn't look at the material as much. He doesn't look at his material things. But what God does look at is our stability and our spiritual walking and closeness with God. Our stability in God, our stableness in God. Uh, verse 17 says, You therefore beloved, see, ye know these things before. Beware, lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked. Fall from your own steadfastness. We see many people have been led away, have been led away uh, 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 with the error of the wicked, led away, and they knew better, they understood better, they've been taught better, but they were led away because uh, that beware, they, they begin to not worry about that beware, they begin to not care about that beware, and so they didn't continue to grow, and therefore if they're not growing in Christ, and they're not growing for the Lord, then they're growing for the other one that can be served, because you can only serve two masters, uh, I mean, excuse me, one master, either God or man, but you can only serve one master, there's only two, two options, it's either God or Satan, God or the devil, and so we've got to understand that, that when we can only serve one master, if we're not growing for Christ, then who are we growing for? You see many people, they begin to look at themselves and they begin to think, you know, many times, well, I've, I've grown as much as I need to. You know, many people get saved and satisfied and there's a lot more to being a Christian than saved and satisfied. There's sanctification that is still real today. There's Holy Ghost baptism that is still real today. There's still the power of the Holy Ghost coming down on people's lives that is still real today. Hallelujah. It's not just saved and satisfied, but hallelujah, when people get saved, it sets them on the right path. It sets their, and Jesus sets their feet on the solid rock, which is Jesus, and they begin to go forth and do right. Hallelujah. But then there's more to do. Hallelujah. But many people get saved and satisfied and think, well, I'm close enough. I'm as close as I need to be. I'm where I need to be in Christ. And so they just let down and let up. And you know what? In reality, it hinders, first of all, their worship. It hinders their worship because they're not able to worship freely and rightly because they, and because they think they're as close as they need to be when they're really not close at all. You know what? We can never get close enough. Hallelujah. But we need to be closer than we are right now. Hallelujah. I'm talking about continual growth. Hallelujah. Salvation. Uh, we got saved. Hallelujah. We got saved, but we should be continually growing in Christ. Hallelujah. We should have the same goods today that we had when we got saved. We should be growing in Christ and in Christian values and morals. Because when we got saved, we didn't know what the Word of God was all about. Hallelujah. And now today, you still don't know what all the Word of God is all about because there's mysteries found in the Word of God, but you're you're getting closer and you grow up, have that relationship with Christ and you, you grow every day in Christ if you allow yourself. Hallelujah. But when we think we're close enough, it hinders our worship. Secondly, it hinders our testimony. Our testimony is, is something that's very important. Your testimony is something that that you know, like I uh, used to hear that saying back in the old days. Uh, you know, when when, when uh, my mom and dad were young, you would hear about <clears throat> they'd go to a car dealership or different. You know, people would go to different places, and all they would do there would be a, there would be a handshake and there would be a transaction done because they were as good as a word. And you always, when we was growing up, you would hear this saying that you know a, a man or a woman is only as good as a word. That's the only that's the only thing they can carry with them and keep right. They're only there's good and you know only as good as a word. You know uh, things happen. 
things take place, but when someone tells you something, or when someone tells you they're going to do something or not do something, then they need to be held accountable and held to that word. And so that's testimony. And so you see as we live this life, you know, many times uh, the enemy has jumped on my shoulder and tried to uh, get me to give in and, 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 and you know, th uh, throw in the towel and say, you know what, you, you, you're, not, you're not making, uh, you're not making uh, uh, any headway or nobody wants to hear you or listen to you or, or nobody's uh, wanting to be involved with that. Many times the devil sent on my, tried to sit on my shoulder before I told him to get behind me, Satan. Hallelujah. But anyway, he would sit there and try to tell me to give in and, and give up. But you know, one of the things that I would think about was my testimony. You see, I might not be much in this world. I might not have much materially in this world, but I can tell you, I want to leave this world with a testimony that I love Jesus and that I share Jesus with the people. That's the testimony that we have to have. And if I let down, hallelujah, if I let down on God, then my testimony is ruined. And the only thing I have is my testimony. Hallelujah. I don't have a lot of money. I don't have a lot of physical things, but what I have is God. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost. I'm not bragging, but I'm telling you, hallelujah, when you've got God in your life, you've got a testimony that will last forever. For 2,000 years, over 2,000 years, the enemy has been trying to destroy the testimony of Jesus Christ, but it can't be done because people read it everywhere across this world. The testimony and the love and the mercy of Jesus Christ is shared abroad. Hallelujah. That testimony is shared to other people. You see, that's what is hindered. When we feel like we're close enough, and we'll just sit back and do nothing. Sit back and not be what we need to be. And so, and then also, thirdly, our relationship with Christ. Our relationship with Christ is hindered when we think we're close enough. Because when you think you're close enough, you don't do anything to get any closer. When you think you're just at the right point, you don't, you don't try to do anything to get closer, to get better, to grow. Or anything like that. And so it hinders that relationship because uh, people have decided, you know, I, 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 don't need to, uh, I don't need to grow. I'll just continue to do what I'm doing and be what I'm being. But you see, we all, always constantly need to be growing. As we, no matter uh, how old you are or how young you are, hallelujah, you've got to constantly understand that you've got to grow with God and with Christ. If you're going to be what you need to be, if you're going to be what God's called you to be, you've got to keep growing. Hallelujah. you got to keep growing for the glory of God. But you see, I've got three reasons tonight is why many people won't grow in Christ. Won't, they, won't, uh, they won't do more, and they won't, they won't step up and, and, and try to do more and become uh, greater and closer to God than they are at this moment. They, they won't try to uh, better themselves and, and, and learn more and understand more and be more effective for Christ. For three reasons, I'm going to give you those reasons tonight. First of all, it's because many are bound by the past. Psalm 103 and 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Many are bound by the past. When Jesus forgives our sins and our past dealings, what's past is past. When God forgives, he forgives and he forgets. When God forgives, he casts those sins and those transgressions into the sea of forgiveness, never to be remembered again. But you see, what happens is man tends to want to remember those things. And uh, sometimes other people come into our past that want to remember those things that tend to bind us down. That's why people aren't growing in the church world many times is because they're bound by the past. It doesn't matter, hallelujah, how bad you were. It doesn't matter how far you had gone in sin or how far you had gone doing whatever you was doing. It didn't matter. It doesn't matter how far you went in the things that you'd said or done in the past. Hallelujah, if Jesus forgave you for it. Then step up and grow. Hallelujah, move up and move out. Let me tell you, you don't have to be bound by the past. Because if we allow ourselves to be bound by the past, We'll never be what God intends us to be. If we're always bound by what we used to do, or bound by what we used to be, or we concentrate on the things that we did that was negative and ugly and bad, we'll never grow to the point that God desires us to be. You see, whatever uh, physical or spiritual that we used to do, that's the past. Hallelujah. We need to quit worrying about 
the past and live for God today. And quit worrying about the past. Hallelujah. You see, what happens is when we concentrate on, on that, concentrate on the past, then we live it. Uh, God, we live it. God, and we uh, we live it. God, and how He can move, how He can work in our life, how He can do things for our life, how He can be in our life. We live it, God, when we begin to be bound by the past and the things of the past, things that that we used to do and things we used to say. You see, I wasn't always a pastor. I wasn't always a, a preacher and a Christian. You know, I've got I, I did some things in my past that I'm not uh, uh, excited about. I'm not happy about. But you know what? Uh, Jesus. Christ came into my life and forgave me for those sins, and those sins are gone. I don't have to be bound by what I used to do and what I used to say and who I used to be. What I need to do, hallelujah, is concentrate on what God wants me to be. Hallelujah, because God has a divine plan for my life. You see, Saul is a good example. Saul, he was re going to wreak havoc on the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Going to wreak havoc. Going to destroy. You see, Saul was there when Stephen was stoned and, and martyred and killed for the glory of God. And Stephen saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. And Stephen was killed. Stephen was murdered. Saul was there. But hallelujah, on that Damascus road that day, Saul couldn't get away, hallelujah, from God's light. Saul couldn't get away from what God had in store. And so as you know the scripture, you know the story of Saul wound up being called Paul. Paul was a new creature, had been made new. His sins were forgiven. What he used to do was no longer what he used to do. What he used to say and how he used to act was no longer who he was. But he was somebody new in Christ. And you know what? Paul didn't worry about what he used to do. He ran as hard as he could for God because he saw and he understood what God brought him from. He was not going to be bound by the past anymore. He was not going to be bound by who he used to be. But what he was going to do was run as freely and as fast as he could to be the, pe be the person and the people that God wanted him to be, to be that leader, to be that one, that witness, that testimony, that one that would go out there. You see, Paul grew in Christ. Paul grew because he understood. Hallelujah. You see, we'll talk about another one. We'll preach about him a lot. His name's Peter. Peter denied Jesus three times before the rooster crowed. They said, oh, he was with Jesus when he was in the garden. And Peter said, oh, no, I wasn't. Paraphrased. Oh, no, I wasn't. Came again. Oh, that, that's the one. No, you got me mixed up. Oh, oh, that's the one. No, it wasn't me. Three times he denied Jesus in the cock crow, the rooster crowed. And then Peter wept. He was upset. He, he was mad at himself, but he was upset because he realized he had failed God. He had failed on what he should be. But you know what? Hallelujah. He got up from there, and he was a fireball. Right that saw Peter was a fireball. Hallelujah. He got up from there, and if you'll remember who began to speak boldly and plainly uh, the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost came down, and they were all filled in that upper room, and they came out. Hallelujah. People thought they were drunk with wine, but they wasn't drunk with wine. They was drunk on the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, it was Peter that began to talk. Peter that began to shout. Peter that began to let people know, hallelujah, that they needed to understand. And repentance was what needed to take place. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, he wasn't going to be bound by the past. He wasn't going to be bound by what he had done and his faults and failures. But what he was going to do was grow. And that's exactly what Peter did. He grew. He grew in Christ. He grew the way he needed to. He did what, what needed to take place. Many bound by the past. Secondly, many are frustrated with the present. Frustrated and upset with the present. You see, this life is not perfect. Everything in this life is not perfect. You might be watching or viewing and say, well, everything in my life is perfect. Well, just wait till your tire goes flat and your dishwasher quits working and your food grows on the stove all on the same day. And let me tell you how life is in. You see, life sometimes can be a kick in the pants. It's not perfect. But you know what? We are flesh. And things are going to happen when we're flesh. We're going to get sick. We're going to have ailments. We're going to have things break down. If, if it's made with hands, it's going to break down. If, if you get a car, it's going to break down. If you get other appliances, it's going to break down. If it's made with hands, it's going to break down. Hallelujah. 
and you know what? We're, we're mortal and we're made from dust of the earth and eventually this body is going to decay and break down. But hallelujah, there's a spirit, there's an there's a inner being in each and every one of us. The soul is going to live forever somewhere. <clears throat> hallelujah, and it's got to be a choice of ours. You see, uh, and so we under, uh, we look at this and we look at the right now and we're, uh, you know, many are frustrated and you begin to think, oh man, what in the world is going on right now? We, sometimes we'll think that God has forgotten us right now. We begin to think, well, God's forgotten about where I'm at right now. God's forgotten. Uh, what's going on in my life? God doesn't see it. It's what we begin to think. God's not watching and not helping me. If he would look down right now, he would see the torment I'm in and he would, he would help me. That's sometimes what people begin to say and begin to think, you know what? That's not growing. That's not growing. We begin to get frustrated in the now. Yes, things happen. Yes, uh, sometimes uh, don't, things don't go the way we want them to. Things don't happen the way we would like for them to. But let me tell you, don't get frustrated in the now because God is still in control of the now. God's in control of the past. He's in control of the present. And he'll be in control of the future. And he is in control of the future. And I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But let me tell you, hallelujah, there's some people in the Bible that we can look that got frustrated. We can look at them and they got frustrated and so it caused them to quit growing for a time, for a period in their life. And I'm telling you today, <clears throat> hallelujah, if we get frustrated in the now, we will, we will quit uh, growing for Christ. You see, when we get frustrated, the first thing we want to do is sit back and say, well, I'm going to sit down and let somebody else do that. Hallelujah. We should have some ameners in here tonight. Hallelujah. Uh, so many times, <clears throat> when we get frustrated in the now, things ain't going just right. We sit back and say, "Well, I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to let somebody else do that. Somebody else will do a better job anyway. I'm just not going to do it." But let me tell you something. God's called you to do that specific task. God's called you to do that specific idea, and specific thing. You can't just say, "Well, I'll let somebody else do it," because you know what? Somebody else has something else God's told them to do. Hallelujah! And if somebody else has to do your job and their job, then that's going to put a lot on them. Let me tell you tonight: don't get so frustrated in the now that you just quit growing. Don't get so frustrated in the now that you just give up. Let's look at the, the children of Israel. They were they were frustrated in the wilderness. Oh, they got upset and they got mad. They got upset. They were frustrated, and so it caused them not to grow. It also caused them not to get go all the way into the promised land like they had been promised because they were belly aching and backbiting and said in an afterlife they were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years because of their, their disobedience to Christ, dis or disobedience to God the Father. God, Jehovah, had blessed them, had brought them out of captivity through the leadership of Moses, had brought them out. They were not in, the, uh, in or under the realm of, of sin, uh, in Egypt anymore. They were brought out and now they're in the wilderness, but they're belly aching and complaining about the now. They got frustrated and so it cost them a lot of years out there in the wilderness, wandering around in the old knees and old my mother grubs. It cost them because they couldn't grow and, and in the frustration that they were in. Oh, we don't have uh, we don't have a, a food and we don't have water. Uh, did you lead us out here to die? We should have stayed in Egypt and, and just died there is what, what the Israelites begin to say to the leader, to Moses and Aaron. They begin to say, oh, why don't you bring us out here? We're just to die in the wilderness. And they, they started getting belly aching and they started uh, fussing. And then we all, we go down the line and we know that uh, Aaron helped them build a golden calf and they were going to worship when Moses was on the mount getting the uh, Ten Commandments and Moses was on the mount and coming back and, and they were down there having a party. They would make a golden calf with their hands and they were going to have a party and bow down to this golden calf and they uh, wanted to consider the one to help lead them out. But this, guess what? Hallelujah, they were frustrated with the, uh, with the present and so that made them do things they shouldn't do. And I'll tell you tonight, hallelujah, if you get frustrated with the now, if you get frustrated with what's going on, it'll cause you to do things that you ought not to do. Just like prime example. I know you've heard it and you're going to hear it again. This pandemic that we've been in for these several months, that's frustrating. That's in the now. It's frustrating in the now. But hallelujah, we can't quit on God. We've got to keep growing in God. 
We can't quit on God right now because we're frustrated about the pandemic. I don't like we can't have the church buildings packed out. I don't like we can't gather around and get together and, 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 and shake hands and hug again right now. I, I don't like it either. But let me tell you, we can still grow. Hallelujah. We can social distance and grow with God. Hallelujah. We can social distance in the church building or in the church parking lot. Hallelujah. Or live stream. Hallelujah. We can still serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. We don't have to give up and give in. We don't have to do things we shouldn't do. Just because we're frustrated with what's going on right now. Just because you're frustrated don't mean you gotta sin. Just because you're frustrated don't mean you gotta give up hope. Just because you're frustrated don't mean you gotta throw in the towel. Just because you're frustrated don't mean you gotta back up. Just because you're frustrated don't mean you gotta give place to the devil in your life. Let me tell you, God has a plan and God sees where you're at right now. He sees what's going on. He sees it. He saw it before and he sees it now. Hallelujah. Keep growing in God. Hallelujah. I'm feeling good. Praise God. John, he was frustrated in the belly of the fish. It was his own doings. He failed to listen to God. So God prepared a big fish, a great fish. That swallowed him up. But when he got down there into the fish's belly, and he was entangled with the, uh, with the seaweed and all the things of life, and he was in that nasty, smelly water, and those seaweeds of life began to get around his neck. He began to think about the now. He was frustrated, upset, and scared. And so, because he was scared, because he was frustrated, one thing that he did was he said, you know what, I, I, I was better when I served God. I better get out of here. And so he talked to God, and God allowed him to get, have another chance. You see, uh, if you find yourself at this moment frustrated with the moment, frustrated with, with life right now, frustrated in the time of uh, living, frustrated with the present, hallelujah, don't forget that God will carry you through. Hallelujah. If you fail or falter, ask God to forgive you, and he'll put you on dry land. He'll, put, he, he'll spit you out of that fish's mouth. Hallelujah, where, where you was entangled in the things of the world and entangled in frustrations of life, and he'll spit you out, hallelujah, where you can go forth and work for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Samson was frustrated when he was when he was tied to those pillars. He was frustrated, and so you know what? When he saw his frustration and understood he was in a place he shouldn't have been because he was frustrated, he asked God to help him, and God helped him. As I preached on the other day, God helped him, and he grabbed those pillars. Hallelujah. And he was able to tear the, the, the place down and more died in his death, more enemies died in his death than when he was alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The disciples, they were they were frustrated when Jesus was crucified. They didn't know what was going to happen. They were not happy with the present. They were not happy with what was going on. But they held on. And they saw the resurrected Savior. And they saw him go up. And that same Jesus that went up is coming back. Hallelujah. You see, God didn't stop blessing. God did not stop planting. God did not stop growing them during these times. That's why, hallelujah, we've got to keep moving on. That's why, praise the Lord, hallelujah, we've got to keep trusting God. That's why we can't get frustrated with the present and give up and quit growing. But we've got to say, you know what, I, I might feel a little frustrated or a little stressed. But I'm going to grow in Christ. I'm going to grow in God. Hallelujah. If we get so caught up in, in, in the time and, and about it's not good, it's not great, things ain't going well, things ain't going the way we planned, we'll fail what God has intended for our life. That's why it's so important we've got to hold on. That's why it's so important we just let God be God in our life. Hallelujah. Keep moving forward. Whatever comes our way, whatever happens around our being, whatever happens around our life, we just need to step up and step out and say, yes, God, I'm going to grow in you. Hallelujah. And if we'll just keep growing. Hallelujah. And we'll just keep growing. We'll keep, we'll keep uh, so to speak, pumping that iron. Hallelujah. We'll just let the Holy Ghost we keep pumping that iron in our life. Hallelujah. We'll grow for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Read the Bible, pray and seek in God's face. That will help us to grow. Being faithful to God. Being faithful to God's house. Being in church when we can. Listening to church when we can. Reading our Bible. Praying for one another. Talking to one another. Helping one another. That's how we grow. That's how we grow. Thirdly. Thirdly. Many people are not growing because they're afraid of the future. We don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know. You don't know. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or the next week. We know what we would like to see.
see. We know what we'd like to see happen. We know what we'd like to see take place. But we don't know what the future holds. But I do know the one who holds the future in his hands. Oh, hallelujah. He's a loving God, a compassionate God. You see, when you're afraid, you don't go towards. When you're afraid, you don't move forward. When you're afraid, you don't move forward. In. Now, you know, and I, I've told you before, those of you that are from our church, you know that I don't like snakes. I, I'm, I'm scared of snakes. I'm scared of heights. So, needless to say, I don't go towards snakes. I go away from snakes. But I'm scared, concerned about the snakes. Height. I don't climb up on a big ladder and get way up in the air because I'm scared and concerned about heights. I was a lot younger. It's probably been 15 years ago, maybe. And some buddies from church, East Alamore, had a house to uh, roof. I was uh, looking to make a little extra money, so I said, yeah, I'll help. And that was the only time and the last time that I've been on the roof. Don't, I don't like heights. We're in a trailer mill back in 94, 95, 96. When they had a spare hand, they, they had me uh, over there on the, uh, the roofing. They put me up there on the scaffold, want me to do the roofing. I told the supervisor, told the boss, I said, you get me down from here or I'm going home. I said, I'm not building this roof. I don't like it. I'm talking about a roof where you walk on the rafters without the boards. They want me to put the boards down on the, the sheeting. I said, oh, no, not me. You see, I, I didn't go forward for that because I, I'm concerned about it. And so you see, I tell you those little, little clips or little notes there to tell you that when you're, a, when you're afraid or you're scared or concerned about something, you don't move forward because you're scared of it. And so many people are scared of the future with God. They're scared of what God might ask them to do. They're scared. You, 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 many people are scared of what God might ask them to say. You see, when God asks you to say something or do something, he's already equipped you to be able to do it. He's not going to have you do something that you can't do. He's already equipped you. He's already equipped you to do it. Like I told you before, Auto mechanics, I know nothing about. Crank the car up, if it cranks, I drive off. If it don't crank, I call a mechanic. Call somebody to help. So you see, God doesn't have me working on cars. I don't know how to work on cars. Now, he can tell me how to. He can show me how to, and I guess I can do it. But it doesn't. So so I don't, I don't have a job or a career or go out working on cars because I'm not a mechanic. You see, God gives us the equipment, and like, even in the physical realm, just like the spiritual realm, he gives that. You see, I'm not a, I'm not a singer. I sing sometimes, but I'm not one of those that, that, that carries a tune like I'm supposed to. But you see, there are some people that are singers, professional singers, that God has given the equipment to in their voice and in their being that they can be professional singers for the glory of God. You see, he equipped them. He didn't equip me for that. He equipped me to preach, to pastor. Now, when I was in high school, did I ever think I was going to be a preacher or a pastor? No, but he had to equip me. And when Jesus Christ came into my life and saved my soul and changed my ways, hallelujah, and then years down the road, and he called me to preach and called me to pastor, hallelujah, I had to move forward in faith. I, I was scared. You see, the first time I taught uh, Sunday school to an adult class, it was scary. Uh, my pastor uh, asked me, my wife and I, we, we was teaching children's church. We was uh, working with the youth. And then I was asked to teach a, a, a adult uh, under 50 Sunday school class. And I, I thought, okay, I'll try. And, and that was scary. I did that. But the scary part was when uh, the, my pastor asked me uh, if, I would, uh, if I would teach the over 50 class, the senior class. And that was, that was real scary because, you see, most people over 50, but I'm only 44, most people over 50, know a lot more than I know, have, have learned a lot more, have, have, have uh, uh, heard a lot more preaching than I have because they've been around more, more wiser. And so it's hard, to, and it was difficult for me as a young minister, as a young, young person that was just uh, uh, serving the Lord and become a Christian and, and working for God. 
uh, to teach, but you know what? I, I had to move forward. I couldn't be scared and, and stay back. I'd never grown. And so I grew. I, I, I went and I taught that class and loved it and enjoyed it. And, and God was preparing me for the time when he would call me to preach. And then go around preaching at different churches. And then, and then he was preparing me for the time when he would call me the pastor. And, and allow me to pastor in Rockingham. And now pastor, allow me to pastor here. And so God richly blessed because I moved forward. Uh, hallelujah in faith. I wasn't scared of what God would have me to do. Because I know that God's got me by the hand. And he's holding my hand. And he's helping me to walk every day, every step. Hallelujah. We can't be afraid to get out of the box, church. If we're afraid to get out of the box, we'll never grow. We can't be afraid to get out of the box because there's lost souls that's in the highways and the hedges that need our help. We can't be afraid to get out of the box. Don't be scared of what the future holds. Don't be scared of getting to someone to witness to them and mumbling or stuttering a little bit. It's okay. We all get nervous. We all get kind of fidgety at times. I still get nervous sometimes when I uh, when I preach to uh, crowds. And, and I still get nervous sometimes. Not all the time, because the Lord's blessed me and, I, and I've grown in God, but I still get nervous. It's okay to be nervous. As long as we're growing. As long as we're going forward. Hallelujah. Because when you're doing it for God, you can't go wrong. <clears throat> Excuse me. When you're doing it for uh, Christ, you can't <coughs> fail. You can't falter. Yes, you might mumble your words. Yes, you might stutter. Yes, you might not be politically correct. I'm just an old country boy. Hallelujah. I don't know all these long, swept all the words. But what I do know is Jesus loves me and Jesus loves you. I do know that. And I do know he gave his life on Calvary for everybody. And so these ones that's in the in the drug houses, these ones that's uh, uh, that's overdosing, these ones that's uh, in the in the bootleg joints, or ones that the ABC store drunk tonight, or the prostitutes, or the gamblers, all these are wrapped up in the sin's red slate. I know that Jesus gave his life on Calvary for them, and somebody needs to share with them that Jesus loves them, and he wants to help them. You see, the world doesn't need to hear how bad they are. They need to hear that Jesus cares about them and will forgive them and save them and change their life. That's what the world needs to hear. So many times, we as Christians, we want to bash people and beat them down, but that's not what they need. They need somebody that will care enough to tell them the gospel truth, that what they're in, what they're doing is not right according to God's word, but God will forgive them and change them if they'll allow them to. That's what we have to do. That's what we have to uh, decide in our life. But you see, if we're if we're afraid of the future, if we're afraid of, of, of getting outside the box, if we're afraid of tomorrow, then we'll never grow into what God wants us to be. Hallelujah. Because you see, like that saying, <coughs> tomorrow never comes. Because you see, in 1201 tonight, it'll be today again. Tomorrow really never does come. But there is a future. There's a future here on earth. For mankind, and there's a future in a place called heaven. There's a future in a place called hell. The future on earth is that the Christians, hallelujah, that mount up, hallelujah, and bind together and let God work in their life, they can reach the lost at any cost. They can reach people that need to be saved. They can live right, do right, and share the gospel with someone else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, there, that's the future. Because God's going to have a people. He's going to have a remnant that will share the love of God with people. He's going to have a remnant that will share what God can do in their life with people. Hallelujah. There's a future in heaven. Because when we leave this earth, we draw that final break. Hallelujah. We step on to the other side. The streets are paved with pure gold. Hallelujah. And the walls are made with fine stones. Hallelujah. And the gates are made with pearl. And Jesus is the light of the city there. Hallelujah. Jesus says, who will be praised and magnified for eternity? And the future in hell is a place where the worm dieth not. There's always weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And the fire is never quenched. There's always a burden. There's always a hurt. There's always a pain. There's always a torment in a place called hell. And that's where those that are not prepared for the future will end up. Those that are not going for God, that are not prepared for the future, not prepared for the return of the Lord or for their final breath on this
Eternity is a long time. Eternity is a long time. Just think about this. This kind of hits home. Maybe you're out there watching and you have not received your stimulus check yet. Or maybe you didn't for a while and you finally did. It seemed like eternity before you got that, especially those that really that really needed it, that, that had a loss of job or loss of income because of the virus, a loss of uh, 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 things because of the virus. I mean, it needed that to help, to, to sustain and to help out. And so it seemed like a, an eternity before you got that, which it wasn't but just weeks, maybe, maybe a month and a half. Some still haven't got there, so say a couple of months. And said, like, but that doesn't hold a drop in the bucket to what eternity really is. Eternity goes on forever and ever and ever and ever. And if we want to have an eternity in heaven, we've got to grow in Christ. If we're happy with the same old, same old, and we don't care where we end up for eternity, then we don't have to grow. We don't have to grow. Hallelujah. We can, we can, uh, worry about, be bound by the past, not, not trust uh, God in the present, and, 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 not, and, and just fear everything about the future. But if you want to grow in Christ, you can do these three simple things. Break the chains of the past. How do you do that, preacher? You say, God, help me to move forward and help these things that in my past that you've forgiven me for, help them to stay to the back of my mind. So that I don't dwell on them and concentrate on them. And God will give you a clear conscience and a clear mind that you'll be able to think on good things and not be chained down and bound down by the past. Secondly, trust God in the now. Trust God in the present. Trust God that he's going to carry you through right now. Trust God he'll provide right now. Trust God he'll take care of you right now. Trust God that he'll help you to grow right now. Trust God that he'll do what he said he'll do and thirdly, don't fear what God's going to do in the future. Don't fear what's coming. Just trust God in the now and let God lead you and guide you into the future. Give God a chance. Give God a chance to have his way in your life. And you'll find out that you'll feel much better. You'll feel much better. You'll live much better. And you'll be better. Hallelujah. Because you're growing in Christ. Growing in Christ. Growing in Christ. That's what it's all about. It's about growing. It's about growing in Him. Verse 18 says again, But grow in grace, which is Christ. Christ gives us grace and mercy. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Grow in Christ. Don't be bound by the past. Don't worry about the present and don't fear the future. Just let God have his way in your life. I ask you tonight, if you're listening and you've been bound by the past, or maybe you have been concerned about the present and, and just, just, just upset about the present, or maybe you're fearful of what is happening next or what God's going to do next, I ask you to pray in this moment. We pray and ask God to change your mindset, change your thinking. Forgive you for those, those thoughts. Forgive you for those things and help you to grow in Him. Maybe you're listening and you don't know Jesus as a personal Savior. Or maybe you backslid and went away from Jesus. All you've got to do is because if you're even thinking about it, God's pricking your heart. God's pricking your heart. Just ask Jesus. Tell Jesus, say, I'm sorry for my sins, faults, and failures. Please come in my life and forgive me. And cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And help me to live right and do right. And you know what? He'll do that. And you tell Jesus that I'll try my best to live for you. He'll help me. And he'll reach down and he'll pick you up. And he'll help you to live right. And he'll help you to grow in him daily. Because every day we're to be growing in God. Growing in him. Growing in what he's called us to be. So I ask you tonight. Are you growing? Or have you hit a stump in your growth and you quit growing? You might want to examine your life and see what's caused you to quit growing. See what's caused you to quit growing. Is it you? If you're
you quit growing, it is you. Something has happened. Something has taken place. You worried about the past? Bound by the past? Worried about it? You're upset with, frustrated with the present? Or you're afraid of what God will do in your life? Maybe you're afraid of, you might not have the same friends that you have now. You know what? If your friends leave you because you accepted Jesus and you're living right, living better, then that wasn't true friends at all. True friends will be your friend no matter what goes on, no matter what happens in your life. True friends will be there. They might not do the same things you do. They might not have the same ideas about fun. They might not be in church. They might not be Christians. But if they're a true friend, they'll always stick by you and be a true friend and help you if you have a need or talk to you. Come see you. They'll still be a friend even after you live right. But, the, but friends will change because those ones that used to do this, that, that you used to do the same things with, they'll put calls on you to be a good old boy or a good old girl and go hang out and party with them. They'll put calls on you because they know that you won't because you're growing in God instead of growing in this world. It's up to you. I want to pray this final prayer. It's up to you. So no matter where you're at or what you're doing, Drop what you're doing right now for just these couple minutes. This is an urgent time. Drop what you're doing and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you tonight loving you and praising you. I thank you one more time for allowing me to bring your message, Lord. It's encouraged me. It's instilled in me, Lord. It's, Lord, I, I, I thank you for this. I thank you for this message, Lord. I ask you to reach down. And Lord, everybody that's listening to you and to hear it, uh, this tonight and, and from days coming forward, Lord, I ask you to touch them. I ask you to bless them. I ask you to minister in a mighty way. Lord, draw them. Prick their heart. Lord, if there's anybody out there that's, that's never been saved or anybody out there that's backslid, Lord, I, I ask you to prick their heart. Help them to know that you're drawing them, Lord, and, and they need to ask forgiveness. And when they do, you'll come in and you'll forgive them and you'll cast their sin into the sea of forgiveness and never be remembered again. And you'll help them to grow in you. You'll help them to move forward. And they'll quit growing in the world, but grow in you. And God, reach down and touch them and save them and bless them. And Lord, those that, that have found a stun in their growth, they quit growing for you, Lord, because of uh, because of uh, bound by the things in the past or, or frustrated in what's going on now or uh, fearful or scared of what you might do to have them do in the future. God, I ask you to touch them and, and please forgive them. Help them just get those things out of their mind and just let you have your way in their life and help them to grow, God. Help them to grow. Help us to grow in faith. Help us to grow in mercy. Help us to grow in knowledge of you. Help us to grow in what you have us to be and what you have us to do. Help us to grow and go forth, Lord. Help us to get big and strong in your gospel. Help us to get big and strong in your word. Help us to get big and strong in what you would have for us. Help us to be what you have us to be, God. Move forth in our life. Let the Holy Ghost power and anointing shine forth through every life, every heart, every home. That we can be a witness and a light to this world. And we can win the lost any cause. We can be a light on the hillside. God, I ask you to bless every life, every heart, every home. Do the work, God. I believe you tonight. And I magnify your holy name. I give you praise. Give you glory and honor. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for your love and your mercy and your kindness. Give you praise, glory and honor. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Don't forget, Jesus loves you. Pastor David loves you as well. If I can do anything for you, please call upon me. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you Sunday morning, 11 o'clock worship. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus.